Jackie RV 10 fans out there. Here is a uh, semi-weekly update. I think I'm starting to do these about every 10 days or so, which is kind of a good timing. So anyway, here's the update. Uh, number one, Jackie, the lovely Jackie, was out here helping me rivet, and she helped me get uh, this side done. I just now discovered she left some artwork here for me to, um, this means that this rivet needs to come out and get redone, which I forgot about that. So I'm glad she left me the artwork. So anyway, that's done. Uh, all the rivets up top are done. These rivets don't get done until way later when we put on the forward skin. And that other frame that goes here, I'm going to be installing here very shortly. Um, having it out, it makes it a whole lot easier for me to climb in and out of back here the several times that I've been out of, in and out of back here now. So that's getting ready to go. Come back on here real soon. Um, for future builders, um, this rivet here, and there's an equal one on the other side. Uh, you'll notice I used a pop rivet here. You probably wouldn't have even noticed it unless I told you this. Um, this J channel is really close inside of here, and maybe I was off just a little bit, but it's just enough to where getting a bucking bar back there is nearly impossible. So I just used a uh, um, CR Cherry Pop Rivet. I ordered um, 25 extra ones from Wix. They have a great price on them. So, um, so that one's a Pop Rivet. There's one on the other side. Um, they're structural pop rivets, so I'm not too concerned about it. And once this gets painted, you would never even notice it, especially if I never told you. Um, we spent quite a bit of the week working on systems. And you'll notice way back there that I did get that Adele clamp uh, put onto the um, conduit. And I got the actual wires run through the conduit. Um, so what you have in here is there are three uh, bundles of wire and then one string. Uh, one bundle is for, there's five wires, two of the bundles have five wires in them, one of the bundles has two wires. The two wires is for the tail strobe and nav light that goes on the bottom of the rudder. One of the groups of five is for the rudder trim, one of the groups of five is for the elevator trim. And the string is so for the extra. The bundle of wire that you see that pops out and kind of curls down there uh, underneath it, that is for the elevator trim. The other two continue aft and go all the way back. Um, eventually, there will be a hole that I will drill about right here that I will be able to, those two wires will come out of there, go across the hinge point, and then down and into the, the rudder um, there. And, but for right now, they're just balled up down here into the tail cone. So the um, wire on the other side, um, obviously you guys have seen this, this is the static, uh, not a big deal there. Um, this is RG400 uh, radio cable. And you'll notice that it goes back there to the back. I, there's enough back there to go all the way up to the top of the vertical stab because that's where the VOR1 antenna is going. I am installing what we call cat whiskers. They're rods that stick out from the top of the tail for VOR reception. Note to future builders or anybody who's contemplating or what have you, um, it may be a little bit of overkill, but I'm adding in a VOR antenna because I have every intentions of taking this airplane down into the islands of the Caribbean and having long-range VOR reception is necessary, not for navigation purposes, but for communications purposes, because many times the uh, flight service stations down there to pick up clearances are going to be on VOR frequencies, not on your regular VHF communications frequencies. So, uh, if you plan on going, know where you're going to take your airplane. Um, there's, I think there's 25 feet of cable here, um, because this has to run all the way to the front of the airplane up to where my avionics is going to be, uh, up there. Uh, also this week I got this drilled, mounted, well it's not mounted, it's just sitting here for right this second, uh, for the video purposes. Um, this will be where the ELT radio attaches to, so it'll be one more cable that will be going through the same holes here to my ELT doubler antenna location, which is just aft of where that T-junction is there for the static lines. So that's all done. Control cables. I need to get back here one more time. And that's because the grommets that you see here, I ordered the wrong size grommets for where it goes through that bulkhead. 
and so I ordered some more grommets and they should be here next week sometime. Drop those grommets in, then I can put the bell crank ribs in that go here, frame goes on, and this will be buttoned up and uh, hopefully next week I can shoot primer for this guy and what I want to show you next, I can get those installed and we'll be off to the races. Um, so also this week I got to working on, this is the trim mount where the servo mounts here and the trim cables and I'll show you guys more of this probably next week because I think we're probably getting up close to, oh, we're over five minutes. Anyway, um, just so you guys know that I'm not infallible and I do make mistakes. There's probably a lot more mistakes here than what you guys would ever even notice. But, um, and sometimes you can work around a mistake and sometimes you just get to redo what you just did. This is going to be a redo. Um, so when you make this, these holes here, let me see if I can get a little closer. This hole, this hole, this hole are not drilled. You drill that hole, you notice there's little lines on it that I drilled on my drill press. So I got the drill press and then I, I drilled that hole in the drill press. And you make this out of just a piece of stock, um, angle aluminum. And so you attach this like so, and then it's supposed to be squared up and then you Clico this side and then you drill the other three holes. Well. So I'd clear coat it, I drilled this one, and when I drilled it, it slid off just a little bit, and so it was tilted. And so then I said, well, that's, it needs to be straight, because the instructions specifically said make sure that they're parallel with each other. So I cranked it over just a little bit, and then I drilled another one, and I said, well, let me look and see how bad it is. And then I looked, and yeah, it looks like a figure eight for a hole, and that is not going to cut it. So, um, task one for next week when I get back from flying is going to be to make another one of these. So, obviously I have extra. I can easily cut another one out and drill the big hole and drill the little hole for the... It, it, it'll take me maybe 30 minutes to make another one and to uh, shape it off into that size. And that one's a little oblong shaped anyway, so we'll clean it up, we'll make it pretty, and we'll make another one, and then we'll get this in here. Um, and just so you guys see where this goes, this goes basically in here. I don't know if it'll fit in here with the cleat codes installed. It will. It will get mounted basically like so. And then there'll be a cable that'll come out and that'll go to the trim mode that'll go to the trim tabs on the elevators that if you've been watching for a while you saw me make. And then the elevator trim servo there to trim the airplane up and down. Um, I just looked at this and said this is shoddy workmanship and it's too critical of a component and so we throw it away we make another one not a big deal so anyway it happens from time to time thank you guys for watching and until next week